Hey, it's Gil from the Mind Buzz. Today's Mind Culture and Social Podcast. And you're listening to Pods Like Us. Hello and welcome to Pods Like Us. I'm Martin Quibell, known to my friends as Marv, and this time I am rejoined by Nathaniel DeSantis from Amalfi Media, who is also one of the two uh, lead presenters of Binge Bros. Hey, Natty, thanks for speaking with me again. Thank you again for having me on. I know I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I'm glad I can be back. Me too. I did notice the uh, the mention in the recent uh, TikTok trends where you were talking about people calling you Natty. Yes, yeah. So it's been, a, I say this on, uh, so I, I co-host another podcast called TikTok Trends that Marv just mentioned. And this is a, a topic that's come up a few times. I'm very anal about my name. Like I'm very, very anal for some reason about it. It's either Nathaniel, like the full name, all three syllables, or natty it's a there's no in between like i hate when people call me nate or nathan or nat that one maybe might be the worst out of all of them uh, but it's really weird because i'll introduce myself as nathaniel and people will literally yeah. be like oh nathan nice to meet you i'll be like i did i say nathan i'm pretty sure i just said nathaniel but that's okay i've gotten a lot better about it now that i'm uh, more mature than when i was a child but when i was a kid it really bugged me yeah. i was like oh nope it's nathaniel but yes, I also go by Natty. Yeah. Yep. And you were first named Natty by uh Natty was a high school nickname that started. Yeah. Was it started by Joey or something from Binge Bros that you do that show with? No. So Joey and I only met in college. He was my freshman year roommate. Um yep. which is really funny because the way it works at the college we went to, you had they you couldn't pick a roommate. You had to like fill out a, a housing form. You had to put like all your interests and whatnot, uh, and like what you're looking for, what are your interests. And Joey and I both lied on that and somehow got each other. I think we both lied about the exact same thing, so they matched us. Uh, but Natty was, I just think it was the only time to- people would try to shorten my name in high school. They'd be like Nathan. I'd be like, nope. Nathaniel. And then one day someone just said Natty. I was like, I don't mind that one. That one's okay. Uh, and it just stuck. People just sort of started calling me that. And because a lot of people will ask me also, like, is there a shorter thing I can call you if you don't like Nathaniel? So in college, I told people, yeah, just call me Natty. It's okay. That works. And then it just stuck around. Cool. So one of the reasons why we're here to chat is because, I mean, I wanted to chat with you again anyway, but one of the big things that's really taken my interest recently are the changes that are happening with the shows on Amalfi Media, the names changes and restructuring technically. Right. So we just... We just celebrated the one year mark of Amalfi Media being a formal company. And my mentality before that is that none of us are professional podcasters or had been professional podcasters, right? We were all amateurs in the industry. That doesn't mean we were bad. That doesn't mean we were good. It just means that we were new to podcasting. So uh, our focus very early on is just refine your craft, get better at being a podcast host 
get better at, for example, Joey and I do a lot of interviews on Binge Bros. So get better at being an interviewer or get better at focusing the conversation or even just get comfortable behind a mic. And we got to a point where we're like, okay, we're no longer really like amateurs as much, right? Like, for example, I think I've... I think I've done 150 podcast episodes across Binge Bros and TikTok trends now. And I'm much better than yeah. when I did episode one, right? Like you naturally get better the more you do something as long as you focus on it. So it got to a point we got better as podcasters, as podcast hosts. And we decided like, okay, now we need to get more focused on our shows. How do we do that? And for a lot of them, uh, Binge Bros was very easy because that one you hear the word binge bros, you know what it's about. You know what binge bros is. Uh, but we had a podcast called Snapshots, for example. That was my dad's podcast. And it got to a point where he was uh, saying, you know, it's just not as fun to do anymore as when he first started. And to me, that's a big problem. If you're not having fun doing this, then uh, we need to figure out why aren't you having fun and how do we make it fun again? Because uh, the goal is to be creative and have a fun time talking. So for that one, he analyzed what does he like doing and we changed it to a show called views on the news so it's no longer snapshots uh, and changed the structure altogether so he just talks about uh, news that isn't talked about not in like a right or left leaning way just more what's going on in the world that people aren't giving airtime to that's interesting or at least interesting to my dad um, and then yeah <clears throat> for my brother started a horse racing show, so that sort of happened accidentally. Uh, he also hosts a politics show. It's called Political Perspectives. Uh, but the horse racing show just sort of started by accident. He was blogging about horse racing on our website uh, because we do blogs as well. And it was picking up a lot of traction. And then he was doing some videos on horse racing here and there. And they were doing really well. So we were like, well, we'll just turn it into a podcast and a video podcast as well. And then that took off, did really well. Um, but really the whole the whole focus of our restructuring was we got better as podcasters. Now, how do we get better at marketing what we do? And, you know, a lot of that is basically trying to tell people exactly what they're getting when they hear the name of a podcast. So political perspectives, for example. You hear, you hear that and you know what it's about, right? Views yeah. on the news, basically the same. Binge bros, you know what it's about. No fear cooking, you know what it's about. Um, TikTok trends, you know what it's about. Even though TikTok trends is probably the least accurate depiction because we talk about TikToks, but it's not like the main focus of our combo a lot of the time. So we did that. And then we decided we wanted complete new cover art because again, we were not making any money when we started a year ago. Uh, we're making some money now and we wanted cover art where people could look at the show, look at the cover art and immediately know this is what the show is about without having heard anything, yeah. without having been told anything. So you look at I'm trying to think of a good example. You look at TikTok trends, you see that TikTok logo on a phone and it looks fun. You look at binge bros, you see us on the TV screen, yeah. you look at political perspectives you see the the white house and the u.s capitol and the inside of the uh the u.s and it's very focused i think that's the best way to put it our, our show is a lot more focused and trying to tell you if you're stumbling upon this we want you to know exactly what you're getting so that's where those changes really came from um and we're really happy with them we've got a lot of quality feedback um, the new art that we got, I, I love it. I think it is beautiful. Our artist over in Israel did a stellar job. She did a very good job with all of that. Um, and I think we're getting a lot of positive feedback on the changes as well. I know a lot of people tell us they like the changes that were made to snapshots becoming views on the news. They, we had a lot of feedback on the horse racing show, TikTok trends, no fear cook, all of it we're getting. We're getting positive feedback about the changes we've implemented, which is exciting to hear because you make changes and you never know, yeah. is this going to resonate with people or not? And it seems to be resonating well. Yeah, I mean, even uh, to the degree that the Binge Bros uh, artwork, that seems to have been sort of almost cleaned up in a way and seems a lot more sharp. 
Yeah, exactly. The Binge Bros artwork is the most similar to what it was before, just with yeah. that polishing touch. It looks more professional because that I actually made the original cover art for Binge Bros on my iPad like one night. Uh, because I I might have talked about this with you on the last episode I was on. I can't remember. But Binge Bros used to be called Trenches of Knowledge. And that's before Amalfi Media okay. was a thing. That was almost in April. It's two years ago in April, Joey and I started that. And so it was, it was called Trenches of Knowledge. And then Joey and I did what my dad did with his show. And we were like, we don't really like what we're doing. Let's do what we like. And we started Binge Bros. Uh, it was very rushed. It, we were very early on in our podcasting career, maybe 20 episodes in. And we were like, shit, we need new cover art. So I just quickly whipped something up on my iPad and it worked for almost a year. I mean, well, I, yeah, I think a year we had that one. Uh, and then we basically gave it to our art, artists. We were like, we like, we actually really liked that cover art I had made, but we just wanted that refinement. And it's a little, because if you looked at that one, we were analyzing when you looked at the original binge bros cover art, what, if I had never seen binge bros before, I would have thought it's almost exclusively a star Wars podcast just based on the cover art. And to a degree, we, we definitely talk about Star Wars a lot. We talk about a lot of Star Wars entertainment and the Star Wars world and, and their TV shows and movies, but it's not exclusive to that. So we wanted to keep some of those elements. Uh, so it still sort of looks like it's in space, which we like. But then we added the TV, the popcorn, the soda, and we kept our faces because there was a version of that one where we didn't have our faces on it. And we sent it to some people who listen to the podcast and they were all like, we hate it without your face. Get your emoji faces back on there. So we threw those back yeah. on. That was really good feedback. We're like, okay, we'll, we'll throw that back on. Uh, but yeah, even that one, you know, small changes, just sharpening it up, making it look more professional. Uh, because we are, at the end of the day, we are a company and we want that professional look. So it helps with that. I, I, st I still imagine the animated version, emoji, emoji versions of both of you uh, chatting as, as, an, as a, you know, cartoony style. <laughs> right. So I actually, um, after we talked that first time, I have the yep. Adobe suite and they have like an animation software and you can put in like elements and it will try to animate it. And I got something decent looking out of that. But it wasn't perfect. And also my computer is really, yep. really crappy right now. I have to upgrade when we have more money. Uh, but it worked, but it was it just looked very amateur. So I was like, ah, I could see this working if we had more resources and more people working on it. So that is something we might revisit still. I'm Agent Scott. And I'm Cam the Provocateur. And we're from the Spy Hards Movie Podcast. That's right. And you are listening to Pods Like Us the podcast that has a license to thrill. So before we go into Binge Bros, we'll finish on this this opening bit then. So what what do you think is the, um, you, you've touched on it slightly, but the importance of the show branding of shows and the changes of logos and the, the importance of music and the sound. I mean, I think all of these things have, have gone up over the last year. The the sound quality and everything of the right. shows has has really gone up by heaps and bounds over the last year. So I'll I'll break that into a few different parts, and I'll start first with um the the branding and the imagery. So a lot of what we're thinking now is what's the flow of how people discover our shows. So how are they seeing it for the first time ever? and making that best first impression possible. We know what our shows are about, right? I work on that. This is my life, editing, producing, making podcasts. I know our shows very well, uh, but there are a lot of people, there's 7 billion people who have never heard our shows before, never seen them before, and have no idea what it's about. So when you're thinking of the flow, there are two things, two ways that it could work. They either discover a single episode, right? So nailing that description in the single episode uh, and with the single episode, they still see the cover art. So just nailing that or they get the show level, like the entire show, right? They go to the show page on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it might be. So really nailing that flow for those people who have never heard of us before so they can be ready for the experience and know what they're getting into. Uh, so that's that. In terms of sound, I'm just, I'm, I'm one of those people who 
is always trying to improve. Um, so for us, a lot of that is sound, right? We want to be professional. We want people to hear our sound and know that this is a legit company that's behind it. Or it's not just, you know, it's not your average person podcasting. Like this is above average if we can do that. Um, and there's also, there was a study that was just released from the University of California two days ago okay. that said um, people judge you as being smarter and more professional the more quality your audio is. And I mean, since we make podcasts, that's like a huge thing for us. So I was really excited when I saw that because I sent it to our entire team. I was like, guys, look, people probably think we sound a little bit smarter than we might actually be just because our audio is a little bit decent. So how about that? Uh, so getting sound really well is important. And, and also thinking of how people listen to your podcast. So for us, I don't want anyone having to turn the volume up and down between speakers. Yep. We have a lot of shows that have co-hosts. It is, it is, and I'd, I don't say this often, but for me, it is unacceptable if one voice is higher or lower than another for our productions. I don't mind it as much for other people, but for us, I don't like it if my voice is louder than Joey's or my voice is louder than Sarah's or vice versa, their voice louder than mine. It's, I want those to be the exact same because no one likes to have to be like, oh, this person's talking. Now I got to turn the volume down or oh, now, now it's back to Sarah. I got to turn the volume back up. So there's that. The other thing that I think of a lot, what's the loudest situation that someone might be in when they listen to our podcast? For me, that's a train that's, or, a, or a bus, you know, someone commuting on a public transportation. So I want to make yep. sure if you are on a train, which doesn't which you know at the start of covid wasn't happening as much it has returned a lot more now than than previously but if you're on that train environment or just a loud environment you have to be able to hear what's going on in your headphones and if the volume isn't loud enough to max that then that's well then you're missing out on the experience people will say i'm not going to continue listening to this cuz i can't hear it during my commute to work um and then music for for us uh, is also really important because we're a very musical family. I grew up playing the saxophone and the piano for around 12, 15 years. My sister did. Uh, my brother played some instruments and my dad sings all the time. I think he might have sang on your show before, if I recall correctly. Uh, I sing a lot. Ooh. Joey sings a lot. You yes. know, we're, we're a very musical yeah. family. Yes. Uh, plus Joey, who's basically family. And we just like catchy music and I, we think it's enticing, you know? Good music helps draw people in. There's, we'll talk about this later, but there's a podcast that we produced. And we being Amalfi Media, we, pro we produced a podcast for a company. And when I was making that first episode for them, I really wanted to nail down the music because it sets the tone. So for me, I was like, I want to find something that makes people w almost curious. Like, what's a curious sound? And I think we did a very good job finding music for that. Uh, but if you listen to the stuff, like if you listen to political perspectives, the music in there sets the tone. If you listen to views on the news, the music there sets the tone. Binge Bros, it sets the tone. The only one that we don't know yet is um, TikTok trends. We don't really have the music down for that yet um, because we're, we're so new. We didn't even know our tone when we started. And I think we're just figuring out what our tone is. But music helps set the tone. One more thing I forgot to mention. We have a cooking show called No Fear Cooking that is also available as a podcast yep. now that just happened like a week ago where it became a podcast as well. Uh, but we complete that's another that goes back to what we were saying about focusing on our content now. Like we've got we've gotten better at what we do. How do we make it better for the people watching or listening to it? And for No Fear Cooking, we realized we we're making these five to ten minute videos on cooking, but in reality, that's not how people cook, right? Yep. You you can watch this video, but you miss out on so much if you don't see cooking from start to finish. And we live in a time where everything is so short and everyone's like, you have to be like, you just got to make your cooking videos one minute long TikToks. And I was like, no, people can't understand the recipes we make in one minute. So instead, we did the opposite. Those are now 30, 40 minute long episodes of us starting from here are all your ingredients. We're going through the entire thing with you so that you get every single important detail that you need when you're cooking this recipe. And if you don't want to watch, you can print out the recipe. That's even faster than watching a TikTok. We include a link to the recipes in the description of all of our videos. So if people really don't want to wait 
of 30 minutes, they can do that as well. But yeah, is, does that answer everything? Is there anything else you wanted me to cover on that? Was that it? Was the music, the sound? Yep. And then music, sound, yeah, the, the, the marketing, uh, show and the, branding, the and the logo. Yep. One but more thing I'll it, say about I, I, sound. Hmm. Oh, am I good to go? Yeah, keep going. I mean, I was going to ask if you use compression software for the sound as well, actually. That, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. We compress the hell out of our audio because that goes back to the whole turning up and down. We only allow three decibels of range in our volume because any more than that, that's when people have to adjust their sound. There, there are points sometimes where one speaker might be a little bit below that three, uh, three decibel range. But for the most part, we aim for three decibels of range so that you're not having to turn the volume up and down. Again, it's just how do we make our audio experience the best quality for the people listening? And that's what you have to think of. What are people going to be doing when they listen? Uh, another thing we do with our sound is I remove almost all bass that I can. Right, a lot of people do the opposite. They they bump the bass up. A lot of men will bump their bass. I think that's a huge mistake. If you have a bassy voice, people will hear your bass even when you cut it. If you don't, just accept that. Right, it's not going to happen. Forcing bass through equalization is going to ruin the experience. But for a lot of car, a lot you got to think. A lot of people don't have the best sound system in their car, and by by introducing a lot of bass, you no. muddy your voice and you muddy what is heard. So I actually listen to all of our stuff in our car before I ship it out because if it's muddy in my car, it will be muddy in everyone's car. And if it's too bassy in my car, I know for a fact that for 90% of people, it's going to be too bassy in their car. And so I, I, I cut my voice by, uh, in the bass range, I cut my voice by around five to six decibels. Because also when you then compress, this has gotten to like audio uh, engineering. Yep. When you're compressing it after you equalize it, you're reintroducing bass back into the sound. So you might cut six decibels of bass when you're equalizing, but when you compress it, you're bringing two or three decibels of bass back into the equation that you have to account for. Um, so just don't don't boost your bass. I think that's a terrible mistake a lot of people make, yep. and it's terrible. YouTubers love to give that advice too. If you're just learning how to do audio engineering, YouTubers love to be like, boost your bass. And it's fine if someone's only listening on a laptop, but this is a podcast. Most people are listening in their car. They're listening on their smart speakers. They're listening in a lot of different environments, not just an iPhone, yeah. not just a laptop, not just a TV like YouTube for example, where that's rarely listened to in a car. So you have to take into account all the environments people are listening in and how is your voice going to come out? Yeah. Yeah. In the, uh, in the mu music world, I remember when I, uh, cause I, I'm, I'm, I'm trained, believe it or not, despite my quality of show, um, I'm actually trained in sound engineering. Uh, so I've done courses right. in it. And that is known as boom, uh, that, that problem that you have with bass, where if it's, there's too much bass on something, it, it does what, what we call in the, in the industry, we call it boom. And you have to make up for that because it can cause a real problem for people. Yeah. I, um, that's interesting. There I didn't know that's what it was called. So I, I mean, I'm definitely not formally trained in sound engineering or audio engineering. I was work before we started Malfi Media, I was working, um, no manufacturing and i just sort of taught myself everything so there's a lot of lingo that i don't know uh, and don't understand but i understand how to make things sound good a lot of people think like there's a secret to it uh the secret is listen you have ears for a reason what sounds good to you yep. what does not sound good to you you were born with the ability to become an audio engineer right you might not have to learn how to use compression you might have to learn how to equalize but it's, it's a few buttons on your computer. If you can figure it out and tinker and push it to the limits, see what those tools do. When you compress all the way, how does it sound in your ear? When you cut this frequency or when you sweep across the frequency range, how does it sound to your ears? So a lot of it's training your ears more than anything else. Hey, this is Greg at Bad Counsel. You want some good counsel? Keep listening to Pods Like Us with Marv. 
and down with monarchy. <laughs> I think another interesting thing with the Amalfi shows is that, uh, and it's another point that I think people need to be made aware of because a lot of podcasters actually don't do this, is the importance of getting the notes right in your show, getting the show notes right that you post up with your show so that then people can have a look at it and then they can look at the description and know exactly what the basically what they're in for from the off. They can look at that and know what's going to happen here, 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 and here. And all your shows are perfectly done that way where you will actually note now where in Binge Bros, for instance, you'll note where you're talking about one specific subject and then another subject and then where an interview is if you've got an interview with someone or a chat with someone. And it's just, I think it's an important thing that people need to learn is to get that absolutely spot on with the descriptive notes. Yeah, I definitely agree with that because again, that's if people are just discovering you based on an episode, that's how they know what's happening. You got a, a lot of people do this thing where they look at what established podcasters do. They look at what the big boys of the podcasting industry do, and what you need to realize is that when you start out, you were not a big player in the podcasting industry. People do not know who you are. You were not a comedian beforehand. You're not a celebrity. You were not a well-known influencer, whoever it might be. People won't just listen to you because of you. You need to tell them, this is what you're getting in this episode. Uh, and you need to listen to feedback. So the, region, the reason that Binge Bros includes the timestamps is because we got a lot of feedback very early on in Binge Bros from certain friends who were like, you know, I love it when you guys talked about that rom-com, but it took me forever to skip through the Marvel stuff because I don't like Marvel. So Joey and I sat down. We were like, okay, well, let's include these timestamps. So if people don't want to hear us review a Marvel movie, they don't have to. If people don't give a shit about a rom-com, they can skip it. If they only want to listen to our new segment, they know exactly what time that is. If they're only interested, it's like, oh, I saw my friends on the podcast. I only want to listen to that. They they know exactly where they need to skip to get to that. So that's a, that's huge. So listen to the feedback and write really good descriptive show notes. Uh, and writing descriptive show notes might also help with podcast search, which is something people don't realize, right? You're giving yes. Apple Podcasts, Spotify yep. details with your show notes so that if someone searches, uh, the harder they fall review uh, or is the harder they fall good, whatever it might be that they're searching, Apple Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitch, or whatever it might be, now has more metadata to scrub from your show to surface it. So it helps, it helps you with search, and it helps the audience know what they're listening to additionally. And you're absolutely right, by the way. A lot of indie podcasters make terrible show notes. We follow a lot of them. We see a lot of them. Yep. And it's rare that they get it right. And I mean, you got to also realize we're not that far removed from being indie podcasters, right? Again, we started not being podcasters, uh, but these are things that you can learn to, to do so that your show's better. Absolutely. This is Dave of Live Life Loud, the Decibolic Podcast, and you're listening to Pods Like Us with Marv. 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 Anyway, now on to the uh, the fantastic show Binge Bros. I'd say it's uh, two friends uh, together chatting about. Well, it says it all in the title, doesn't it? So you're chatting about television shows that you've watched, whether they be on television or streamed. Uh, quite frequently streamed, hence the brin the binge of it all, and films as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it, that one's pretty on point with the title. So I think people can imagine binge bros. They're probably been it's probably two bros binging stuff together. But we, uh, it's yeah. it's pretty mixed between TV shows and movies. Usually between Netflix, Disney, and HBO. Occasionally, Amazon Prime Video. Not as often. Uh, we don't have Hulu, so never Hulu. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we also have a new segment during every episode at the very top. We call it Did You See, um, which is that's like the one thing in Binge Bros that's not very descriptive when we say it, but we like the, we like that name because it's like, oh, did you see that Tom Hanks got COVID, for example, you know, 
So it's sort of like, oh, do you see this? this is really cool info. Uh, and usually we both of us have seen it already anyway. Uh, but yeah, that that's the gist of Binge Bros. Yeah, I I would say you got it, Marv. Good job. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that did you, did you see? That's that's an interesting one where you'll you'll mention stories that you've that you've both uh, noticed in the week, and you'll bring them to each other or trailers that you've seen. Uh, but it's almost like a, it's not an in-depth discussion. It's just a quick, you know, few sentences or paragraphs between each other about, oh, did you see this? And then chatting about it for only a couple of minutes. And then it's it's almost um, like, um, you know, in news where you get news flash, flash this, 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 mm-hmm. this and this. And then you go on to a main subject. And um, from there, you know, and, and then you go into rev- reviews and... Yeah, all sorts. And when you watch shows for the first time, for instance, that's interesting. When you binge them and then you'll discuss those or films for the first time, like this week with Frozen. <laughs> yes, Frozen has been highly <laughs> requested for me. Joey's seen it. This is, I'm, we're, I'm reviewing it for the first time ever on Friday's episode. I watched both of them. I just binged them. Uh, but I, yeah, I like what you said about the Did You See segment being these short, like you know two three four sentences back and forth uh because i think what a lot of people don't realize about binge bros is that we're not trying to be professional reviewers that was never the goal of binge bros joey and i just like movies and tv shows we like talking about movies and tv shows and i would equate it more to listening to your friends talk about movies tv shows and entertainment move uh, entertainment news more than here's like a professional from a uh, binge mode going in depth on this. It's just, it's, yeah. it's how you and your friends would talk about movies and TV shows because that's, that's how most people talk about it. Like not everyone is a, is a douchebag movie reviewer, right? Writing these like in-depth articles about why this is the worst or best movie of all time. Most people are just shooting the shit with their friend being like, Oh, you know, I thought that was a really cool part in the movie. And like, I wonder what that's going to do for, marvel or for pixar moving forward or like wow those pixar animations this year were crazy uh so it's definitely more laid back and it's the same thing with the news aspect most people aren't spending 20 minutes talking about one specific piece of news with their friends it is more like oh wow did you see this new york times article about timothy chalamet like that's crazy like oh yeah that is crazy you're yeah. right yeah, it's like it is. It is what what it is. It's it's two 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 buddies just shooting the shit with each other, shall we say, or whatever it's called. I'm trying to think of the proper saying there. <laughs> a Brit trying to use an American. There, yeah. Was it? <laughs> oh, you guys don't say shooting the shit over there. That's a, that's an American I don't phrase. Think I thought so. that was universal. That's an American phrase. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I didn't know that. We keep nicking all your good uh, good phrases. What's up, everybody? This is Chris from the podcast Real Film Reviewed, and you're listening to Marv on Pods Like Us. So um, when you're doing the show, then, do you both research it before? And what, what goes into making the show? Um, Joey does a lot more research than I do. I'm more, I'm more of the I'll watch it and then I'll just think about it throughout the week. And I'll be like, what is my gut feeling on this? Like, what, what is yep. my mind telling me? How did I like it? Because that's more important to me than what went into it. So uh, I think Joey does a lot more research again than I do. I'm trying to do more research because I do think some context for these films is important, right? Like how is this filmed? Uh, Especially right now where what Joey and I noticed is there's the COVID era of movies and then there's the vaccine COVID era of movies. Like when were these movies made? Cause we can pretty much tell like, Oh, this was definitely like a COVID era film. And because the quality is yeah. shit, it's not very good versus some of the more recent ones where it's like, okay, this is very good uh, I, for really, really big releases. Right. We have Spider-Man coming up. I'm going to do a lot of research because I like those ones a lot. And I know it's going to yeah. get more attention than something like our, um, the you review that we did a few weeks back. It's just going to get, more eyes on it because it's a really big movie like dune for us did really well our review of that did really well so i tried to come a little bit more prepared with that in terms of what did the director think of it 
what do the actors think what's cool about some of the behind the scenes stuff that can add some interesting elements but it really it really does boil down to just watching the movie and then i think about it and then if i'm conflicted i'll watch it a second time or if i'm conflicted i will do a little bit more research to try to get some more understanding of the film um but i do want to i do want to do a better yeah. job researching i i'm working on it i'm trying to get better and when I do do research, IMDb is huge. They always have those uh, behind the scenes facts on IMDb. I like those a lot. Um, just articles by other big publications are really helpful for those. So that helps. And inevitably, our did you see discussions usually come back. Like we have had did you see conversations around Dune before the movie was out. And then yeah. when the movie came out, we were able to look at those previous conversations from my entertainment section from our news segment and apply it to the review and what we thought. So I, I think that's really cool when previous episodes can come back like that. Yeah, it's, it's a callback. Yeah. Which is cool. Doing a callback like that is, is cool. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm about to do a callback now. So um, uh, for instance, Binge Bros is a cool show because it is just without it's not condescending in any way saying this it's just the two ordinary people on the streets opinion of films and of tv shows that they're watching if you want to watch a show that's uh professionals in that field then you'll go to a show where i've talked to before which is real blend and they do a really good job of being professionals who look into film and television but if you want to listen to just two Two blokes chatting between themselves, like you would do with your friends in the pub. Binge Bros is the show. Yeah, I take no offense to that. That that Marv, you understand our show perfectly. You're you're the perfect listener because that's exactly the vibe that we're trying to throw off with that or give off with that show. Um, because that really is it is two we're just ordinary guys. So we just talk about movies. We're not like movie buffs by any means. We just enjoy chatting about them. And I like I like your equation of uh, at the pub chatting about it. Because I yep. now that you say that, I do talk about movies a lot with my friends when I'm out drinking. So it, it is more <laughs> more like that. And we're, do, we're introducing, uh, I don't want to ruin it, so I'm not going to say too much. Uh, but we're doing okay. a Binge Bros After Dark uh, that will pre- premiere in January. That will be a, a monthly bonus episode with a buddy of ours. Um, we're very excited about that. Yep. It'll be a different avenue for Binge Bros. We'll, We'll still do the normal four a month where we review uh, movies, TV shows, and do entertainment news, but this is a little bit, little bit more laid back. It won't have any movie reviews, but it will still be movie and TV show centric. So we're really excited. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to that. that that's a cool cool thing as well, because that's, that's another ultra change that I've seen as well, where at one point you were doing two episodes per week, of binge bros and that's now gone to a nice lean it's a bit longer than than they used to be but for a reason because you you're condensing both of those shows that you put out per week now into a single show technically yeah exactly yeah we, we were doing the two a week but um for everyone listening i'm the only one who podcasts and produces full time we we're hoping that we can, uh, within a few months, we can change that. And it's looking like we might be able to, but I'm the only one. Joey has a full-time job, so he doesn't have as much time on his hands to just talk like I do. It's always, I, I always feel really bad for Joey. Like we're recording an episode tomorrow night uh, at five o'clock for our Friday episode. And, you know, that's a day turnaround. And that's after he's done a whole, you know, seven to five shift at work. So it can be a lot for him. So we, we cut it down to one a week and that also goes back though to what i was saying about feedback anytime we had a long episode we would get both more listens and more feedback that people like the long episodes of binge bros okay so by cutting back our schedule i think we actually helped the show grow because we'll still get people it's starting to get our shows are like an hour and a half for binge bros They're they're starting to get really long and people are still saying, make them longer. I'm like, how how long do you want to listen to us? Like, it's already an hour and a half once a week. You want me to talk for like three hours? Like, listen to my, if you want to continue listening to me, listen to TikTok trends. Yep. You can get a whole another hour and a half there. Like, I, I got you. But I people like long content. And that's actually something that really 
surprised us at Amalfi Media to discover was that the longer a show was, the better it performed. And I hate looking at it like, how does this perform? How did that perform? Right? Again, it all goes back to are we being creative and having fun. But it is interesting that the longer a show is, the better it does. That's very interesting, that. But um, we will come back another time to speak to yourself and Sarah about TikTok trends, I think. Yeah, I know she wants to come on with me, so we'll we'll have to schedule that to make it happen. Absolutely. So, um, how is Binge Bros recorded and edited? Then, are you, are you both doing it over over Zencaster or, or or whatever, or do you do it in person with each other, or is it a mix of the two? So, around once a month, we'll have a, an in person episode because Joe only, only lives like an hour and a half away from me. So it's not difficult for us to, we, we visit each other pretty regularly. Either he comes to me or I go visit him. Uh, and we always, you know, we make a big ordeal. I always think those are our best episodes, the in-person one. I think Joey would agree as well with that. Uh, so we do every once in a while, we'll have an in-person one. Uh, Joey's going to be here December 15th, 16th, sometime around then. So we'll get another in-person episode then. Um, that will be fun. But other than that, we do use Zencaster or Riverside, just depending. Yep. Um, but we we just both got um, PodTrack P4s for our show. My dad uses a Zoom F6 for his show. Uh, we use the Zoom PodTrack P4 for Binge Bros and for TikTok Trends. Yep. And the way that works is we can get uh, independent recordings on the PodTrack. It's a recorder. Uh, so we hit record. And then Joey will upload me his audio. I have my audio. I sync it. It also records the audio coming through my computer so I can sync it with what he was saying. Um, and that's because we were getting a lot of audio drift issues with both Zencaster and Riverside. And it all goes back to what we were saying about the, the quality of our productions. I didn't like that. So we fixed it, which is very nice. Also, by the way, before I forget, uh, December 21st, Binge Bros is doing a live episode. Oh um, yes, on Twitter Spaces, yep. where we will be doing a live review for Spider Man No Way Home, uh, December twenty first on our Twitter account with Spaces. Yep. People can either listen in or they can like raise their hands and talk with us. I just wanted to mention that's another aspect of how do we engage our audience, right? How do we get more involved with our community? Um, so there's that. Editing wise, I use Adobe Audition for everything. I love Adobe Audition. I really like that it does 32-bit uh, float audio. If you have 32-bit float audio, there are only two or three devices that are capable of that. Uh, my dad's recorder is a 32-bit float audio, meaning it is impossible to clip anything in that recorder. He cannot clip his voice at all. I have complete control over that okay. because the human voice does not go over the range of the 32-bit uh, input. So there's no clipping on his show. Uh, the pod track, unfortunately, is not 32-bit float technology, so we can still clip. Uh, although we do have a limiter running on there, so that if you were to accidentally clip, just nips that in the bud. Because uh, no one likes clipped audio. No one likes to listen to clipped audio. It sounds like shit. Uh, so we're all, we will all eventually transition to using 32-bit float recorders, but for now, they're very expensive. So we had to deal with the budget that we have. We could only afford one. Um, and I trust Joey and my sister to set their levels properly, which helps. Um, but we edit it. Adobe, Adobe audition. I think it's fantastic. It gets everything you need. And we use a few, uh, waves plugins for all of the audio, uh, engineering. So we have, Oh man, I can't even remember what they're all called, but we use their um, compression one. We use a limiter that they have. Um, Waves is okay. I don't really like their business practices that much, but they make good plugins, so it helps. Cool. So, um, how do you then choose what subjects that you discuss? And also, alongside that, how do you choose subjects that you might not discuss in Binge Bros? Um, for the, for the movies, Joey and I will meet once a week, either after we record the episode that's coming out or just like a Tuesday or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and we'll just look at what's trending. We'll be like, uh, okay, so this is on Netflix. We have a schedule of like all the movies that are coming out to theaters. 
all the movies that are coming out to HBO. So we look at that. We try to see what's in the top 10 right now uh, on all the streaming platforms. And then if it doesn't interest us, we won't do it. So there, oh, I'm going to, pardon me, I'm going to use my phone to find the example I'm thinking of because I cannot uh, remember it right now off the top of my head and pulling it up. Hold on one sec. Uh, So we were going to do the power of the dog for this Friday's episode. Yep. And we both got 20 minutes into it and we just didn't like it. So we, we just cut it. We're not reviewing it anymore. So if it doesn't interest us, we don't quite understand the purpose of reviewing it. Um, because we're, we're just going to have a bad review. Uh, so really, it's a, it's a combo. What's trending and what of that trending content, what interests us? And then that's, that's how it rolls. And then the news, Joey and I just each have a notes app on our phone. And anytime we see a news article related to movies, TV shows, streaming, uh, or entertainment, we just keep note of it and bring it up during the episode. Yep. So in that sense, then, that case where you've... Uh decided that you're not going to actually do go any further with that film have you actually got a backup in place for that uh right so usually we we don't like need a backup because it's rare that we pick something and then really hate it to that point uh if it does happen joey and i will have a quick emergency call we'll be like what do we do we either find something else that's trending or we think of other content ideas. So like on Friday's episode, my sister's coming on. Sarah will be on. Uh, and I don't want to spoil what we're talking about, but we're going to have a fun combo with her, obviously related around movies and TV shows. Yeah. Uh, so that works out really well. So it's either we figure out, do we want to have a friend on, or do we want to watch something else? Or do we want, sometimes we'll even say, or do we just want to make it a short episode yeah. with longer, a longer did you see and just one review? We've done that occasionally. Uh, but yeah, we'll usually find something else. It's not that hard to watch a movie or a TV show. Like it's not asking for a whole lot. It's like it's like, oh no, I have to watch something for two hours for work. Oh no. Yeah. And uh, should I apologize now that I'm one of those who voted for the Twilight Zone? I am sorry. Oh, it's okay, Marv. We we accept <laughs> your apology. I you know it's interesting though because a lot of people actually wanted us to do that. So I think it's really good. Uh, and I think you know. Our audience voted for it, so we were going to watch it, especially because the audience voted for it. But if, if that was something we had independently chosen, we might have skipped it. I'll just say that. <laughs> I think it was worth it, though. Because now, well, well, the reason I'm excited that we watched that is because, you know, Spielberg directed one of the one of the anthologies in there, and we're going to be seeing West Side Story. So I think it's really valuable to know the whole Spielberg catalog before going into West Side Story because he's had some that we really liked. He's had some that we've not liked as much. So we can talk about like, why does, why, why is West Side Story better or worse than Twilight Zone or any of his other movies? So I actually think it's really valuable that we watched that. It's, it's a very interesting uh, film director, you know, uh, Spielberg in a way, because he's not, um, um, uh, you, you can't say that he's a film director who makes this sort of film because he's got such a variety of films in his cat back catalogue that, you know, whereas you could say that Scorsese, most of his films are related to, to gangsters or to to gangs, even, even when you've got Gangs of New York and films like that. But even then, there's there's more variation than that in, in his films. But with Spielberg, it's such a wide... Uh, catalog of things that he's made i mean et is nothing like uh amistad and amistad is nothing like schindler's list so you've got such a wide uh catalog there that spielberg's made and i that's actually one of the reasons why i disagree when people say that scorsese is better than spielberg because i if i'm gonna watch a scorsese movie i know i'm gonna get a voiceover who's explaining the story to me, right? With Without fail, I'm going to get that main character talking over, uh, you know, breaking the fourth wall, whatever it might be, who's explaining the plot as it goes. I, mean, I don't know if every single one of his films has done that, but all the ones I can think of have done that. I know it's going to be, like you're saying, probably about gangs, mafia, or like with um, The Wolf of Wall Street, you know, people who are doing bad things, yeah. right? Societally bad things. Uh, and, and I know what I'm going to get from that type of movie with Spielberg. 
you're absolutely right. It is. He has a, a wide variety of films, and I respect that a lot because it's not easy to to do a very, very, a very um, diverse catalog of movies. That's the word I'm looking for. Absolutely. Yep. G'day, g'day. This is Matty C from the Astros Fantasy Football Podcast way down in Australia. And we love getting to listen to Marv meet new podcasters from all over the world here on the Pods Like Us podcast. Although, I mean, you know, in, 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 the, in the Scorsese, you have got things like Raging Bull, which, which aren't that way inclined, but the few and far between. You, you know, I'm, I, in a way, I would say that for such an incredibly established filmmaker, it's strange that Spielberg is still willing to sort of experiment and see what he can do outside of the established. I mean, how much more away from his usual fare a film is West Side Story, which is a musical. You know, that's, that's so out of you. You would not expect a musical from Steven Spielberg. Yeah, I remember when I think that was a I think that was a news segment at one point on Binge Bros. I think that was a Did You See about West Side Story? Something came up about it at one point, and I remember thinking like Spielberg's doing a musical. That's that's new. I've never, I've never seen that. I specifically remember even saying on, on an episode that I was anxious because I wasn't sure if it was going to be good or not, just because he's never done something like that. But I've been reading a lot of reviews saying apparently it is his best movie ever. Right. Wow. Mm. I mean, I, I know a lot of films that I love by Spielberg, so you know, <laughs> that's people hype up. Reviewers really hype up movies. So if they say it's the best movie ever, I'm assuming it's going to be good. It's not going to be the best movie of his ever, but I'm assuming it's at least going to be decent. Yeah, because I mean, it, it, it is up against quite quite some some really good classic films, you know, like Jaws, um, Close Encounters, E.T. Jurassic Park, the first Jurassic Park. Yeah, I was going to say Jurassic Park might you know, be my favorite. And uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mean, th- there's a lot of films it's got to go up against, really, for that title. But there's also, I feel like there have been such average movies lately that maybe that's why people are saying that. They're just, we're finally getting something decent. People are like, oh, thank God, like something good. <laughs> so I, although a lot of people would argue that Dune was. Uh, was probably the best movie of the year, and I really disagree with that. I actually think King Richard was better than Dune. I don't know if you've had the opportunity to watch King Richard. Highly recommend that, though. After listening to your review, that is on the list to watch. I've put that on the watch. My dad did the same thing. He listened to me and Joey review it, and then last night I walk into his room and I see him watching King Richard, and he (laughs) told me, he's like, yeah, I liked your review of it so much that I I had to watch it. Uh, He ended up loving it. And my dad's not usually a big Will Smith fan like me and Joey. Me and Joey love Will Smith. Yeah. Uh, not my dad, not so much. So he was blown away by Will Smith's performance. I know I was. This is the best thing he's done in ten years, uh, and it's just, it's just good. It's just a good movie. I think Will Smith. Um, how could we say this? It's got completely different style altogether. But if you look at an, uh, at an actor like uh, Jim Carrey, I think when Jim Carrey comes out of his usual, you know, Ace Ventura, The Mask, and that sort of, the usual Jim Carrey type of role, and he goes into a role that's more along the lines of Truman, or even, uh, oh, what's that What's that horror film that he did? Something, is it something like The Number 13 or something? But I think, much like Jim Carrey with that, when Will, Will Smith comes out of, the films that you're used that you expect him to be in and he goes into a more dramatic role like this with King Richard and you know with the six degrees uh, from before you get a more interesting performance from them because they're forcing themselves to do something that's that's different to a degree right yeah I like the example you you mentioned especially uh, dropping Truman show I think that's uh that's one of the movies my dad made me watch when I was younger that I'm thankful for. I remember yeah. really enjoying that when I was a kid. Uh, and that's a movie that I, I feel like, I don't know, maybe in, in the UK a lot of people have seen it, but I actually feel like a lot of my friends have never seen The Truman Show. Uh, and when I tell them, you know, Jim Carrey's in it, I get a lot of weird looks. Like, is it really going to be that good? Because uh, I'm not a huge Jim Carrey fan, but Truman Show is just phenomenal. 
phenomenal work. Yeah, it's 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 also a bit like another another one is when uh, Paul Rudd does more dramatic roles as well. All these people who do more dramatic roles, it reminds me of um, like uh, Robin Williams when he first went from co- comedy roles to more dramatic roles with uh, uh, is it Moscow on the Hudson or, or whatever it's I can't remember what it was that was his first dramatic role and Awakenings when he was in Awakenings as well, but and even Dead Poet Society, they are so far oh, away from, yeah. you know, the, the comedy that they were so used to with these people. And in some ways, I think that these people can actually put a more humanistic slant on these characters in a way than, than somebody who's a trained actor, should we say. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think comedians have a lot of ability in acting uh, just because I think to be comedic, you need that ability uh, and a Robin Williams one that I love is ah, is it 21st Century Man? I don't, I'm not sure if that's what it's called. It's where he's the robot. Bicentennial um, Man. By, there we go. Bicentennial Man. I I had to watch that for a class in college. I'd never heard of it and didn't even know it was a thing. And I I ended up loving that. That was such a thought provoking movie. Yeah, and One Hour Photo as well. That's an incredible film with Robert Robin Williams. It's very scary in that film. Really. Yeah. Interesting. I'll have to watch that. I've seen, I like that Poet Society. I think, I think every high school in America has basically played that for their students at least once because I saw that in high school and it, that's a really good one. It really is. Great. Good film. So when uh, you have guests on Binge Bros, how do you arrange and choose the guests that you have? Guests are, I'm trying to think. Yeah, ba- guests are just our like my, our close immediate friend group. We'll just text a really close friend uh, or family member, yeah. and we'll say, "Hey, do you want to come on Binge Bros this week?" Or a really close friend will text us and be like, "I want to come on, come on the show." And we'll be like, "Okay, yeah, let's let's get you on. We can do that. That'll be fun." Um, and for that, usually they'll have texted us something they want to talk about because uh, we're not going to make them review a movie with us because. Even though it's a very laid back review for us, uh, it's still not something everyone can just jump into without practice. With the exception of a few, like our friend John comes on a lot, yep. uh, a lot, excuse me, and he already talks about movies with us all the time. So it's, it was really easy for him to come on and review like Ted Lasso. But usually, like uh, like my like as I mentioned, my sister Sarah's coming on uh, Friday's episode. She texted me and Joey a few weeks back um, something that she wanted us to talk about on the pod. So we just texted her the other day. We're like, hey, why don't you just come on and talk about it with us? Um, or my, usually that's actually what it is. Mostly it's like close friends or family saying, hey, will you talk about this on the podcast? And we'll, we'll say, sure, talk about it with us. Because usually that means they're just as interested in the topic as we are. We do want to expand outside of our friend group. Uh, we, we would like to get actual industry professionals on. Uh, and we're now at a size where we think we can sway at least like showrunners or some people behind the scenes to come on and get them involved. But uh, it's a very difficult task to be like, you should come on our podcast with your busy schedule making movies. Uh, it would be great if we could have celebrities on one day. I mean, that's the yeah. goal. That'd be awesome. Uh, but yeah, right now it's just close friends. Um, we'll text them and be like, hey, come on. I think the the recurring ones are usually our some of our best friends. I think Emily and and John have been on multiple times uh, because they're both very close with Joey and I. So it makes the combo easy also as people who are getting better at interviewing. That helps when you know the person very well, as opposed to like, we've never met this person before in our lives. What do we talk about? Uh, so yeah, that's basically how we pick it. That's cool. So um, I was actually going to suggest to you, you could always chat to uh Ooh, you can look on my friends anywhere if you want to and see if you can find Dave Bradley or or Rich Edwards because uh, they they used to work for SFX magazine and they do the show Robbie the Robots Waiting and uh, okay they might be great they might be good guests on on your show there's a sort of okay you know, I will take note of that yeah. I like that that is good yeah well we also like going on. We don't do it much. We don't go on many podcasts. That's something we're trying to do better. That we, we want to go on more podcasts and help them grow, because uh, it helps them grow, helps us grow. It's you know, it helps both people out. So that's a that's a good call. I will definitely take note of that. 
Okay. I, I think what you've just said is a good thing as well, where it's, it's almost like um, almost like a cross-pollination where you're basically going onto somebody else's show, that people come onto your show, and it's building up your – you know, the network basically of and, and each other's shows, you're building each other up and helping each other out. I think that's a brilliant thing about podcasting. I agree. And I think it's very unique to podcasting. I think a lot of industries, it's like, why would I help someone else out? Right. A lot of industries are very selfish. Whereas with podcasting, it, it's very open, especially the indie podcasting industry. It's very welcoming to having people on and I help your show. You help my show. You know, we help each other. But also to go back what we were saying, you know, marketing is great at all. Getting good cover art is great. Getting good show notes is great. But how do you get in front of those people so they discover you? And going on a podcast, you are literally talking to people who listen to podcasts. Like that is your audience. Those are the people that you want to get in front of. So it's very helpful for that. And it's something we don't do enough. I know we should do it more. Uh, but if, if you're looking at it from a marketing standpoint, especially, that's your audience. It's a great way to go about doing it. Well, that's the whole basis of my, of the show that I'm doing at the moment is, you know, to get podcasters on. And if you've not heard them before, suddenly you can hear them and get a taste for what they, they are like as podcast host and what their shows are about. And you might suddenly find a new podcast to get addicted to. Yeah, I mean, that, that that is a nice goal. I would hope so. Yeah. I hope some people have gotten addicted to me because of your show, Marv. That'd be great. <laughs> I hope so as well. I do know, I do know, like, uh, but yeah, I know every time I someone from Amalfi Media comes on your show that I'll, I'll get texts being like, hey, I love, like, your dad's interview. It was like, it's great. It's like all these random people. I'll be like, that's so, that's like, it's so interesting who ends up listening. Yeah. Um, especially both to your show, but also just our own content. I'll have people text me from high school or middle school that I haven't talked to in years. Yeah. I'll be like, yo, that last episode was awesome. I'll be like, I didn't even know you listened to this, but that's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. It's like when, when Gil had you on uh, as a guest on the mind buzz and, and Gil was saying to me, he says, he says that, that guy that you talked to Nathaniel, he said, he sounds so cool. How do I get in touch with him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah gil was great and i know we got matthew on gil's podcast as well after that yeah yeah but he, yeah because gil said about that one as well when i talked to to matthew about right so to to go behind uh the cur- pull the curtain a bit here uh political political perspectives used to be called from the swamp to the swamp uh but i think political perspectives is a much clearer title than uh, than from right. the swamp to the swamp, but that's another case where Gil heard that and and he just thought, just said to me, he says, "Oh, he says I enjoyed that episode with, with Matthew. I'm going to contact him now." <laughs> that's great. And I agree with what you're saying. By the way, political perspectives is a, a much better name, and that's also from feedback we got from the swamp to the swamp. I think it makes sense if you know politics really well. But even if you do, it's just a pain to type in. Like have to have to search from the swamp to the swamp. It's a mouthful to also tell people like, oh, listen to my our one podcast from the swamp to the swamp when you could just say political perspectives. And then it also gets the point across like, oh, it's about politics from multiple perspectives. Great. So, hey, this is Tim for Bad Counsel. You want some good counsel? Keep listening to the smooth, dulcet tones of Marv on Pods Like Us. <laughs> But going going into the titles thing, actually, you know, I should have mentioned this earlier, and I didn't think about it. So, uh, y- y- your dad's show, but the Blaine DeSantis, his show, you had snapshots, and then he had the offshoot that was the uh, dinner and a dot 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 back in the day, and then right. those two were sort of like brought together and became the Blaine DeSantis show, and then it went from the Blaine DeSantis show to what it is now, which is views on the news, right. Yeah, that was um, – so views on the news really came from the Blaine DeSantis show because the the reason we started the Blaine DeSantis show or the reason we renamed it – yeah. saying start, I guess, works, but with podcasting, what's nice is you can change the title at any point. So the reason it was renamed to the Blaine DeSantis show was because uh, my dad really enjoyed – he did enjoy talking about history, but when you don't have 
a full team behind you, it gets to be a lot of research yeah. and it gets to be worth again, like I said earlier, it's just not fun anymore. So he changed it to the Blaine DeSantis show because that what it did was it allowed him to talk about whatever he wanted to talk about. And from that, he discovered, I really like talking about these hidden news stories and that's going to be my focus moving forward. Yeah. Uh, even though I have the ability to talk about whatever. So he started, that's what it became, right? He was talking about these news stories that no one tells you about. And then we analyzed it and we said, okay, if someone's looking at this for the first time, no offense, dad, no one's going to say who like, Oh, Blaine DeSantis has a podcast. It's going to be like, who is this guy? <laughs> like it's the same thing. If I name my show, like uh, Joey and Natty talks, like who are these guys? Yeah. Um, so we said, what do you do? What are you talking about? And how do we, how do we show that to people with the name? And that's how we thought of views on the news. Yeah. And you did the same, much the same thing with TikTok trends as well, where it was, uh, was it the Sarah and Natty show? And that became TikTok trends. And that says it all as well, because Correct. even though not all the subjects that you talk about are about TikTok uh, items, it sort of explains that it's about things that are trending at the moment on social network for the most for the most part. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's very much you'll think it might be about TikToks, but you see the TikTok trend, so you assume it's gonna be about something trending, right? Something that's trendy, whatever it might be. So it does get the point across much better than the Sarah and Addy show did. Uh and it allowed for very cool cover art. That might be uh actually i think views on the news might be my favorite of the cover arts i think that is such a cool one with the newspaper yeah. and the guy holding it but i think the tiktok trends one is just uh it's very dynamic i don't know how our artists did it but to me it's it's like it's almost like it has movement yeah and i think that works really well with tiktok so i appreciate that aspect of it yeah, it's almost like one of the in the old days those magic eye pictures it's like it's moving but it's not Exactly. Yeah. And, and I, that helps with because TikTok is it's so dance heavy on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, so it really does help portray that as well. Absolutely. So you, you, I think you've already gone into this one here. So what have you got to come then that you could tell people about? Um, things to come. We do have that, as I mentioned, the December 21st Binge Bros Live episode. Yep. That's going to be a lot of fun. So follow Binge Bros Pod on Twitter so that you can get the updates on that because that's where we're doing that. Um, that is to come. We, we're doing a giveaway right now for TikTok Trends yep. podcast. We're giving away a $50 Uber gift card and a $50 Amazon gift card to one person. But for everyone who enters, they get a free sticker. Marv, I saw that you collected your free sticker. I actually also just saw the UPS guy deliver it five minutes ago. So those stickers just got in the mail. I'm very excited about that because we've been waiting on those for a while. Uh, so we're doing that. But over the next six months, each one of our podcasts will be doing a giveaway as well. Um, so I know No Fear Cooking should be the next one. And then I think it's the Win Play Show. And then we have other ones. And it's all giveaways related to the content in some way or what the hosts talk about. Like I talk about drinking a lot and Sarah <laughs> talks about money a lot. So we were like, oh, Uber and Amazon. This is great. This is perfect. Uh, and we'll be giving away stickers for every show too. So it's not just TikTok trends. So all of our podcasts will have these stickers uh, in addition that we're just giving away for free. And you know, our car, what's nice is that we have nice cover art. So it looks nice on the stickers as well. Very professional. It'll look good on your car, on your water bottles, laptop, whatever it might be. Uh, so we have that. We, I don't think you can expect any new shows moving forward because right now it, it is just me doing all the editing and all the work. So it can be a lot. It can be a grind on top of running a business uh, and on top of, you know, as I mentioned to you off script, I have a meeting at six o'clock tonight with our team. You know, we have to be on the same page and everything. So there's a lot that goes into running a company there's a lot that goes into co-hosting three podcasts because I also co-host No Fear Cooking now. There's a lot that goes into editing and production, marketing. Uh, so I would say no new shows, but I can say new bloggers. Expect new bloggers. We should be having some interns doing some blogging very soon. That's exciting. Um, 
maybe some more production work. And this might be something we talk about later, but one avenue of business that surprised us were companies wanting to to have us produce their podcasts. So maybe uh, another podcast here or there. Uh, but something really exciting is people should start. <laughs> it depends. This might be exciting for some people. It might not be, but people should expect to hear advertising in our podcast within the next few months. I know why why is that exciting as a listener it probably isn't that exciting cuz now you've listened to an advertisement it's exciting for someone who's been podcasting for 2 years uh, because they love it because it means that we'll make an income and it also means that our team can hopefully get to a point where we can all do it full time and that we're creating a company that actually can help feed people and then expand you know once we start making money and have a bigger team we do want to have more podcasts come out and produce more so that's something to look forward to. Yeah, I, so that's yeah, that's everything. That's everything that's coming. Okay, but we'll touch on this for a very for a very very quick uh, point. But uh, so what what Nath- what Natty was explaining then about another show that they produce uh, is a show called uh, Simple Civics, Greenville County, and it's it's about uh, the politics in that specific area. And although it's not technically an amal- an Amalfi Media show, it is an Amalfi Media produced show. So how does that work? Basically, I go over there with our very nice equipment and we record everything there in person. And then I edit it. I do all the music. I take care of scheduling it. Uh, I We made the website for them. Uh, and we just make sure all they have to do is talk and we take care of everything else. That's sort of how I put it to them is, you know, you have ideas in your brain that you want to get out there. You know who you want to have on the podcast. That's great. We take care of everything else so that all you have to do is just talk with the person you want on the podcast. And then we make it sound professional. We make it sound legit. We make it sound really good. We take care of scheduling it. We, we do all the behind the scenes so that you don't have to worry about that. And again, it's not our content. We don't own it, but we do produce it, which is very nice because we get to include that in the show notes that we produce it, which I like. But also it's really, really, it's really nice to be able to do something community focused like that because we are located in Greenville, South Carolina, or the legal entity Amalfi Media is located here, even though our entire team is not here. Uh, So it's nice to be able to help the community in that way with a podcast that tries to get people more involved in civics and in politics. Yeah, I I think it's it's interesting as well because it's a shorter length show as well in in a way. And it just so uh, it will talk to people about specific things in the uh, area or region that people need to know about. Like, uh, I found it fascinating, that interview with the, uh, what is it, the youngest mayor of uh, Greenville County in, in history, I think, isn't it? Who's just been been uh, made mayor. Oh, right. The, uh, the a Fountain Inn, which is part of Greenville County. Yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that just came out. Yeah. But yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah. The people, so that podcast is made in partnership with two nonprofits. It's the Greenville Partnership for Philanthropy and the Nonprofit Alliance. And I think they had such great foresight when they first approached me about producing this because they said, we want to make a podcast about local civics and politics, and we want people to listen to it. So we want them to be five to 10 minutes in length because otherwise people will not listen. And the feedback that we've been getting at Amalfi Media and that they've been getting is that people love the length because it's a very, it's a dense topic and it's a boring topic. Local civics and, and politics for a lot of people is not very interesting, right? It should be. It definitely should be, but it's not. So here is something that makes it more approachable and gets you excited. I, I heard a lot of my friends who saw that we produced it, they listened to it and they said, oh, wow, this is really cool. I didn't know this was going on in our community. Uh, and the only reason they decide to give it a shot is because they saw I only have to dedicate five to 10 minutes of my time to enjoying this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you're right. It's, it's interesting that they've uh, caught on to this really, because I think a lot of uh, local government need to, it would help them 
to have shows like this because then they could put out information that the local people in those areas need to know, but in a way that's easy for them to find out because very few people now read like these little leaflets that these government organizations post through your letterbox and things. They'll just be like, oh, I haven't got time for that. Whereas you've got time to just put on a pair of headphones and listen to a five, 10 minute program that gives you what you need to know at that moment. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And yeah, again, as I was saying, it's just nice that uh, we can be involved with that to help with that. I, I really appreciate that. And it also goes back. My degree in college was in politics and international affairs. This is the first thing I've done professionally. That's even close to having to do with my degree. So I actually get to feel like I, I'm sort of using my degree with this. You are. That's true. Anyway. So um, what other podcast do you listen to when you get the time? Uh, I don't think this has changed much since the last time. I still listen to Joe Rogan, but I'm very specific. I only listen if he has like a health expert on. Uh, so he has he had like a weightlifter on the other day, so I listened to that. Um, so I don't listen to it as much anymore because it's gotten way too political for me to enjoy. Uh, but if it is a psychologist or a health expert, who talks about how to make your body better, like a dietitian, whatever it might be. I'll listen to those episodes of Joe Rogan. I really like the Sam Harris podcast called um, Making Sense. I think that's a great podcast. Sam Harris is a neuroscientist, uh, big meditation guy. I like to meditate. So his podcast tries to incorporate that. One I have started listening to since we talked is called um, Mindscape. It's by Sean Carroll. Yep. He is a mathematician. It is very fascinating. He's a lot of mathematicians on, a lot of scientists on, and they talk about very interesting topics. I like that. Um, let me just scroll through all the other stuff. Obviously, I listen to all of the episodes of our podcast because I have to edit them, so yep. I can't even avoid it if I didn't want to, but I do like <laughs> listening to our stuff, which makes it easier. Uh, there's a BBC one called Discovery that I like a lot that my dad got me hooked on. Um, and the, the real story, another BBC one. It's a really good one. I like that one a lot. And one, those are the ones I listen to when I have time. That's cool. So, um, where are we going to now? So how can people get hold of you and, uh, get to find all of these shows that Amalfi do? So there are two ways to find our shows on your podcast app, search Amalfi media or the name of the shows. I mentioned them multiple times throughout this. Um, or you can go to Amalfi media.com and on our website, you can go into our podcast. You can see everything there. You can get all of our episodes with the show notes. You can get all the blogs that we do as well. And the future blogs to come as we grow. Um, and to get a hold of me, you can follow me personally if you want to Amalfi Daddy on Instagram and on Twitter, uh, or follow Amalfi Media on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. We have a TikTok, we're not as active on it. Um we've Binge Bros Pod has an Insta as well, I will Just. say, and a Twitter. Uh I would follow those for the live episode for sure. Um, but yeah, that's how you can get a hold of me, and that's how you can find all of our shows. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much for chatting with me again, Natty. Thank you again for having me on. And I hope to be on very soon with Sarah and maybe even with Joey. We'll see if we can get that in the books one day too. So thank you though for having me on, Marv. But we shall see because I know that Joey is, we won't say uh, what he does, but he's a very busy man in his work life. Very. Yes. Incredibly. Yeah, he's a very busy work life outside of podcasting. And and I do know that both me and my occasional co-host Louise are looking forward to talking to you and your mum about uh, no fear cooking. Right. I'm yeah, I honestly I have basically essentially then three more episodes of these lined up Mars. So this is not really a goodbye if you think about it that way. It's a temporary <laughs> goodbye. It's a as we say over here, see you later. Yes. Yeah, just, uh, okay. See you later. That way. See you later, Marv. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or after I do the sign out and we carry on talking for a minute. 
Anyway, thank you everybody for listening. You can get hold of Pods Like Us by contacting us at uh, podslikeus at gmail.com. And there's also information about the show at themarvzone.org. And you can find us just by looking for Pods Like Us at Twitter, Facebook, and on Instagram. More active on Instagram, you'll find a lot of... um, I post up a lot of... um, um, shows that I listen to and podcast suggestions and advice for people on, on there but uh, until next time I hope you listen again to another episode of Pods Like Us <laughs>